Hey everyone, Pastor Brendan here. Welcome back for another Faith Fuel video devotional. I've just so enjoyed being able to, to, to teach these and to break these down and it's a huge honor just to spend time with you on a daily basis. If you're joining us live, give us a shout out in the comments. Let us know that you're here. Greet your other fellow live Faith Fuel video devotionalers. That's really a terrible word, but you know what I mean. Uh, if you're watching this also via, you know, uh, on demand, just great to have you and we're so thankful that you're here with us. We are continuing our study today on running with the horses. Jeremiah 12 verse 5 says this in the New Living Translation. If racing against mere men makes you tired, how will you race against horses? If you stumble and fall on open ground, what will you do in the thickets near the Jordan? And so this verse has really been the foundational theme for our study here on Faith Fuel, but also for what I've been preaching and teaching in Toronto City Church in the series we have going on in this season, entitled as well, Running with the Horses. And so in that series, I'm really challenging and encouraging each one of us to embrace the process of what God is doing with what we're facing even now in our lives, allow him to work with us because he's called us to great things. He's called us to run with the horses, but if we get worn out even now running with men, we'll never be ready to run with the horses. So we've been being challenged and encouraged to run with the horses. And again, what I wanted to do during these studies is focus on different actual practical things that you and I can do so we can run with the horses. And so, so far we've talked about, and our focus has been on Hebrews 12, verse 1 to 3. Uh, and actually, so let me read it, and then we'll, we'll kind of dive in. It says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which clings so closely. And let us run with endurance the race set before us, looking to Jesus, the founder and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of God. And so we've been breaking down this passage and looking for truths and principles of how we can run with the horses. We've talked about the great cloud of witnesses and the fact that so many men and women of faith have gone before us and they have run their race and now they're cheering us on. We've talked about the need to lay aside every weight and to lay aside sin, which clings so closely. Why? So we can run. And today I want to focus on the next part of the verse, which says, and let us run with endurance the race set before us. And I particularly want to focus on the, tr the truth here that we need to run with endurance. You and I, if we're going to run with the horses, need to learn to run with endurance. I mean, really in Jeremiah 12 verse 5, this concept is, is really built into the verse where it's talking about if you're racing with mere men, it makes you tired. So as you get worn out running with men, how are you ever going to run with horses? Right? That is not speaking as much to speed, even though speed would be part of it, but it is speaking towards staying power. It's speaking towards how long can you run without getting tired or how long can you run without growing weary. Right? I'm not saying speed isn't in there, but that's really the intrinsic concept that's built in here is this thing of endurance. And guys, real talks, I think you know it, I know it, but it's always good to be reminded the Christian life, the Christian walk, the Christian race that we're called to run is not a sprint, but it is a marathon. Now, I wish it was a sprint. Not that I want my life to be very short, but you know, sprints are explosive, they're exciting, they're powerful. And you know, the 100 meters, if you watch the Olympics, it's done in under 10 seconds. I don't know if you watched Usain Bolt over the last decade and a bit. I mean, I know he's retired now, but man, it'd just be exhilarating to watch him dominate the 100 meter finals. And I know, especially if you're a, a track buff out there, I don't know if Paul Martin's watching or others in our church who ran track. I mean, it's just incredible. You know, these, these powerful sprinters, men or women, they're everyone's faster than me in that context, you know, and, and it's just boom, the gun goes off and it's, it's like 10 seconds of adrenaline and exhilaration and then it's done, right? And it's amazing too because it's all this buildup for just a 10 second race. Now that's, that's, what the, uh, that's what, you know, we wish things were like. But the Bible is really clear. We're, we're not in a sprint. We're in a marathon. Now, I don't know if you've ever watched a marathon. I've never watched a marathon. I, I don't even like watching the highlights of a marathon because it's just, oh look, they're running again. Oh look, they're still running. Oh, it's a couple hours in, they're still running, right? Now, I'm not trying to hate on people who love watching marathons. I'm definitely not trying to hate on people who run marathons. Blessings to you. You keep running. Do, what, do, do you. Go for it, right? Uh, I'm not trying to but I'll just say this. It's very different uh, than the 10 seconds, right, where it starts, the gun goes, and then it's done. But the marathon, part of what makes a, a marathoner uh, powerful is, yes, there's speed, but there's staying power. 
See, sprinters only have to generate their speed for 10 seconds. It's like maximum output. Marathoners need to generate over, you know, 42 point whatever kilometer. I mean, it's just time. And they run incredibly fast anyways in that. But it's more about staying power. You can run really fast the first kilometer or the first mile in your marathon, but that's not going to win you the race. You've got to have the staying power. And so all that to say, if we're going to run with the horses, one of the biggest things that God is developing in us, and I believe it's one of the biggest things he's developing this season, is he is developing perseverance. He's developing endurance, right? It says run with endurance. He is developing a steadfastness in us. He is developing a staying power. Why? Because the Christian life is not a sprint, but it's a marathon. This race does not go to those who start well, but it goes to those who start well, who do the middle well, and who end well. You've got to keep on running. Let me share a couple verses just to stir your faith up this morning regarding endurance. Because I know, straight up, this is not like our favorite topic to talk about. We want stuff, especially nowadays in our generation, we want things fast. We want things quick. I mean, I remember uh, a day ago, I was picking up my children at school, and they were taking longer than I thought they were going to take to get them in to sign me out. They are figuring out their new system, and I already started to felt like, you know, this agitation rise up inside of me. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Like, relax. But, you know, we're so used to, I want it quick, right? Like, why is this drive through line taking so long? Why is my internet so slow, right? It's just like, you ever want to see someone what they're really like? Give them slow internet, right? Ladies, you're dating this guy. He seems good. Don't say, I, don't say yes until you see how he handles slow internet, right? I'm being silly, but I think we've all had, you know, because we want things fast and we want things quickly and we want things now, but in the things of God, it doesn't work that way. Yes, there's times where we have suddenlies, but even suddenlies are often, you know, it looks like a suddenly, but there's all this prayer and preparation and kingdom stuff that was going on behind the scenes. It takes time, right? It's, it's like the Bible talks about the kingdom being like a seed. It takes time. Weeds grow quickly, but weeds aren't worth anything. But crops that are worth something take their time. An oak tree takes its time, right? But it's got this incredible staying power, right? It's building perseverance in our lives. If we're going to run with horses, we've got to continue to allow God to build our endurance. Let's just look at a couple verses that talk about this. Galatians 6 verse 9. Let us not grow weary of doing good, for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Hebrews 10 36. For you have need of endurance, so that when you've done the will of God, you may receive what is promised. James 1, 2 to 4, one of my favorite passages. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you knowing that the testing of your faith develops steadfastness, or another translation says perseverance. And let steadfastness have its full effect, that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. Right? Let steadfastness, let endurance have its full effect. In other words, you know, what we're seeing so far is He's saying, don't grow weary in doing good, for in due season you'll reap, if you don't give up. What's the challenge for many of us? If we don't have steadfastness, we have endurance, we give up too quickly. Right? What I found in my life, what I found with many believers, the problem is not doing the right thing, it's doing the right thing for long enough. Not giving up. Right? 1036, Hebrews 1036, you have need of endurance. Right? Like, this is the word of God, guys. We need endurance. We need to be able to run for the distance. Right? Sometimes things are not going to happen as quickly as we thought they would. Things are not going to come into place the way we thought it would. Will we continue to run? Will we continue to press forward? Trusting God that he's got us in the big picture. Right? Trusting that the long arc of the kingdom, everything will come into play. Right? In James, that he, if we're going to grow, and, and it's really important, he said, Count Joy, you've got to develop endurance. You've got to develop perseverance. I mean, this makes so much sense because even if I was meeting with a young leader or meeting with a young believer and saying, what's the most important thing I can develop? Well, one of the things I'd say is teachability, right? Because if you are teachable, there's lots you don't know, but you can learn because you're teachable. God can get to you. If you're not teachable, you don't want to listen to people, you think you know it all, you're arrogant, you are not going to go very far in God because if you just become teachable, there's so much. So I'd say be teachable. But the number two, I would say, be like learn to endure Learn to keep going. Because even if you don't get it right at first, even if you don't understand, if you learn to just keep going, eventually you're going to get there because God loves you and he's got you. So if you're teachable and you also develop endurance, you are going to do great things for God. It might take a little while to get there. You might have some interesting winding paths because there's lots to learn. And there's lots to learn. But as long as you stay teachable and as long as you practice endurance, you'll get there. You know, Hebrews 6 verse 12 says this, so that you may not be sluggish, 
but imitators of those who through faith and patience inherit the promises. See, patience is another Bible word for endurance. It's standing fast. It's standing firm no matter what. And that God says that you inherit his promises through faith, but also through patience. And so if we're going to run with the horses, guys, it's going to take faith, but it's also going to take patience. God is building that steadfastness. He's building that endurance. He's building that perseverance in you. That you don't, your difficulties don't stop you. They don't throw you off. You keep pressing forward. And so if we're going to run with the horses, we've got to learn to keep running. Develop that endurance. And, and developing endurance is not easy. Let me just say this in close. It's not easy because you've got to push yourself to develop endurance. You gotta push yourself to develop perseverance. You gotta go through some challenges, but if you just keep out, every time you get stronger, and then the next challenge you get even stronger, and the next challenge you get even stronger, and all of a sudden you're running with horses where you never thought you would. Why? Because you embrace the process, and you allow the Lord to develop this perseverance and this steadfastness. Amen? So let's run with horses. Let's let God develop that endurance in us. Oh, it's been great to spend some time with you. Again, if you were blessed today, please hit the like on the video. And also make sure you subscribe to our channel if you've not yet. It just helps us build our YouTube community here for Toronto City Church. God bless you. I'll see you again for our next study.